Hi, my name is Natalie Murray. I'm a retired police officer and freelance forensic artist. This is me, and this is my website. This is my book I published recently on digital forensic art techniques. I talk about how I draw forensic art using Corel Painter. So what I wanted to talk about today is the different skulls. Uh, when you're doing a drawing and you're trying to draw somebody with uh, African ancestry and the drawing just looks like a white guy with dark skin, it's not coming out properly. Part of the problem could be that you're not considering the skeletal structure underneath the skin. The skeletal structure is different for different ancestries. And once you learn that information, it might help your drawings to look a little bit more uh, appropriate for the face that you're trying to draw. So what we have here left to right is the African derived skull, the European derived skull, and the Asian derived skull. Looking at them from the profile, you'll see that the African derived skull is longer from the front to back than the other two skulls and shorter from top to bottom. The European derived skull in the center is kind of the middle. It's uh, not as long as the African derived skull and it's taller the Asian derived skull is the shortest front to back, but it's the tallest top to bottom compared to the other two. You'll see that the African derived skull is what is called prognathic. Uh, for the most part, the, the lower part of the face pulls out from the skull. In the European skull, I think that the part that uh, pokes out furthest is the nose. To me, the European skull, the nose uh, leads when it comes into a room. The nose is the forward facing projection point on the face. On an Asian derived skull, mostly you consider that the uh, the whole face comes into the room together. It all It's all fairly uh, flat surface. It all comes in at the same time. When you look at the skulls from the front, uh, what I notice first off is the nasal cavity. You'll see on the African derived skull, the nasal cavity is more rounded, wider. The European derived skull, the nasal cavity is thinner here, and also the Asian derived skull is as well. Uh, you can see better in the profile that the base of the nose here is fairly high between the eyes on the European derived skull. On the Asian derived skull, it's pretty low. There isn't as much of what is called a brow ridge as you see on the European derived skull. This is a fairly shallow swoop here on the Asian derived skull where it's fairly sharp on the European derived skull. It's kind of in the middle of those on the African derived skull. On the Asian face, keeping in mind the fairly flat face from the front, the zygomatic bones, the cheekbones through here are also forward facing. Uh, they're fairly flat through the mid face here and the shading then that you would put on the face would be further out and I'll show you that in the drawing that I uh, illustrate that with later on. So where the European face is curving more and the African face has more curve through the center of the face, the mid face, the Asian face is flatter through the mid face and all the shading is out through the outer edges of the face. When we look at the male and female skulls, the female is here on the left, the male on the right. You notice the male skull is larger, uh, more robust than the female skull. The female skull looks more uh, graceful and dainty compared to the male skull. For the most part, obviously you're going to find a male skull or a male that is not as uh, large and masculine or a female that is not as small as dainty, but this is if you're trying to portray someone as typically male or typically female, this might be a way to go for you. So the male skull, you can see that it has again this brow ridge through here and the forehead slopes back a little bit more. The female does not have a brow ridge and the forehead is more straight up. The mandible, the jaw here on the female is smaller than it is on the male and you'll notice the angle of the jaw is quite large. With the male, it is more of a square angle here. The chin is more square and wide on the male. The chin is normally more pointed and small on a female. You notice the male has some really rough edges on the edge of the zygomatic arch, the cheekbone. That shows that he's got very strong muscle attachments through here, so he's got a very muscular face. The female normally doesn't have uh, really strong muscle attachments through here. It's a softer face, a softer look through the face. You can also, uh, to make something look more masculine, you might make the skin have uh, larger pores, make the skin look a little rougher. You have hair on the bottom part of the face, that sort of thing. Make the female's face look softer and rounder, uh, more dainty and graceful. And then comparing the three ancestries on the drawings, as you see on the skull, 
uh, starting from the left, the African derived skull, the nasal opening is wider, the nose is wider. When I'm doing a reconstruction from a, a skull, I have the, uh, the wider nasal opening. I also draw the nostrils uh, eight millimeters wide. With a European skull, I'll draw the nostrils five millimeters wide. So the nose overall is, is much wider on the African derived nose. The nostrils are also more rounded. In a European nose, the nostrils are more elongated, not round. So that makes a difference too. The Asian nose, you see, I kind of have it somewhere in between. After the nose, then move down to the mouth with the African derived face. Again, trying to shade it so it's more prognathic, the mouth area sticking forward a little bit, and the mouth itself is more generously formed, more lush, the lips more full. The European mouth, the lips are not as full. Usually the male has thinner lips. A uh, female will have fuller lips. In European derived face, uh, your lips thin as you get older as well. On this Asian derived face, I've drawn more of a rosebud mouth. That's not necessarily the case for every one of that ancestry. It just seemed to fit with the face that I drew here. Also on the ears, someone of African ancestry normally has much smaller ears than someone of European derived ancestry. Your ears will get longer as you age also, but uh, normally they're, they come down to about the base of the nose and as high as the upper eyelid on someone of European ancestry. So as, uh, as I talked about with the brow ridge, you see that indicated here by the shading on the European derived face on the brow ridge shading on the top between the eyes and then the height of the nasal bone on both sides here. You see that somewhat on the African derived face and you see the width between the eyes here. And then on the Asian face, you notice not a lot of shading through here because this is not a very high bone structure between the eyes. And most of the shading is way out at the edges of the face, not a lot of shading through the mid face area to indicate more of a, a flat aspect to the mid face on the Asian derived face. And then when you bring in a female face to try and make something more feminine instead of masculine, I made the eyebrows a little thinner and gave them a bit of an arch. A lot of women pluck their brows and give them a bit of an arch to make it look more feminine. I made this nose a little bit more delicate, a little thinner, and the lips fuller on the female of European ancestry than they are on the male. And notice the chin just a little thinner and the angle of the jaw there a little sharper to make that look a little bit more feminine on her. So I hope that's been more helpful for you in your drawing and, and gives you a little bit more of a direction in which to go when you're trying to draw a face. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.